Boop. Boop. <laughs> Boop. Okay, here we are. We have Fighting Spirit, top right, Hydra in the blue Terran. Bottom left, Noni with the brown Protoss. PokerStrategy.com. A lot of StarCraft players out there, uh, talented poker players. I'm sure if you're a poker player yourself, you probably know about Elki. Uh, he was a former professional gamer here in Korea. Mm-hmm. You gotta give the guy props, um, Rekroll. Uh, who doesn't love Rekroll? Who doesn't love Rekroll? <laughs> <laughs> Actually, maybe lots of people, but we yeah. love Rekroll to death. Um, Nazgul, the owner of um, Team Liquid, uh, talented poker player as well. Mm -hmm. um, there's definitely a tie here between these two scenes, and I really want to thank the whole poker scene um, and StarCraft scene for kind of uniting here. Um, Absolutely. I, frankly, they're a smart company for sponsoring a StarCraft event. Super smart, They're super man. smart. You could sell shoelaces and sponsor StarCraft, and I'd be like, you are so intelligent. <laughs> You're going to sell so many shoelaces. <laughs> By the way, cross spots here. So, um, Even though nerds wear Velcro shoes. I, I do. I don't know about you. Yeah, I don't man. have time to tie my shoes. Are you kidding me? i got to play StarCraft. Yeah. Um, no, but seriously, uh, with the cross spots here, I think we could see a very long game. But you know what? This has actually been kind of um, a rocky ride as far as... Uh, the results of each of these games going and what's happened. I feel like we haven't gotten to a normal Hydra Noni game. No, we have not seen them play to their strengths really at all. And there's only one more chance for them to do that here. Because yeah. after that, it's all over, man. And I think we're actually going to see Hydra do that. I, I expect a macro game out of him. No no shenanigans, man. Absolutely not. No two-factory on this map. No starport, I don't think. I mean, no, I don't think. I don't think he's going to go start for I think he's going to go for a macro game. Noni, on the other hand, what is he going to have planned? Because, you know, he seems so confident. He has to have a really good build plan for this fifth map because I don't think he was thinking I'm going to 3-0 like Hydra was thinking. Okay, we see the early Cybernetic score. Time to send out the scouting probe. One of the later scouting probes um, compared to what you'd see in a normal PVT. But, of course, this is a pretty big map, so it's hard to get to your opponent's home turf. Might as well use that probe to mine a few extra minerals. Right, um, minerals are good. Those things are pretty good. You can spend them on all sorts of things. Yeah, can you imagine can. they had credit cards in this game? <laughs> I wish they had credit cards. I'd I never would, miss a detail. I would go into serious credit debt just rushing for carriers <laughs> um, so I could uh, pay it off later with my TSL wins. <laughs> I'd tech to tax collector and totally own the man. <laughs> well, we see the probe coming up, and Hydra actually doing the gasless expansion once again. The probe coming up, oh and will God. Hydra cancel buildings and leave the game? That's what we're waiting for. Noni's open. He's like, come on. Come on, thousand dollars. Come on. An exciting game so far. Um, again, this is so un hydra ish Let's say Hydra advances right now within this uh, this series. Uh, this really says that Hydra has evolved from the stereotyped one-build player to this guy who is a, a, a jack-of-all-trades. You know, I gotta point something out. When we see Idra go up against someone really, really, truly respected in the community, he does switch it up a lot more. For anyone who watched the ESWC finals, uh, Idra versus White Raw, he mixed in some other builds like Two Factory that we had never seen from Idra. So since then, really, you know, when needed, he does switch it up. So, you know, I think we just see him play normal a lot because of him just having better macro than most of these players. But Noni, he respects, he's playing a little bit different. And Noni, look at this. Proxy, middle of the map, man. Proxy in the middle of the map. Um, and this could be dangerous against what Hydra's doing. You don't see fast command center a lot. And it's for a reason. We see Gateway in the center of the map. That's right. The, well, we have Marines popping out of the bunker. Or into the bunker, rather. Out of the barracks. Out of the barracks. That's where they're the bunker. They live in the bunker. Up the tree, down the hill. <laughs> no, but look, it's, uh, it's going to be pretty serious with this proxy. Over like the this. river and through the woods. That's right. To grandmother's house to Idris base. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I, I bum rush. Um, and I think that's gonna be actually just missed everything. Yeah, it did two gateways. Noni, a big fan of proxying two gateways nowadays. Always, this is actually kind of interesting because what we're seeing here with Noni, um, very similar to the first game, is do a very aggressive all in Ooh! rush. There's three, three gateways. In the middle gateways. Of this brings me back to my early casting days of Draco against Midas. Yeah, uh, where I saw Draco. Uh, manhandle, no, Protoss handle um, the Alpha Nerd Midas. And uh, he wasn't just murdered, he was nerdered. Uh, <laughs> Whoa. New word. New word. Uh, 
not here. No. no, but really, again, this is not something Greg's used to with playing against uh, Noni, and Greg's probably played against Noni than almost any other player out there. Now, look at this right now. The Dragoon's attacking this bunker. They have range, so Hydra has to spend a lot of minerals repairing, and Noni has stopped all probe production, so he is kind of all in. If he doesn't do a lot of damage, then Hydra's just going to get so far ahead, economically speaking. Now, this is actually what I'm scared of. We see right now the barracks moving away, landing so tanks can get down that ramp and harass these goons. But as Noni gets, you know, five, six goons, he's going to be able to just run past this bunker and, in fact, just target siege tanks, you know, run up the ramp. And I'm actually really, really scared for Hydra here. Uh, he might just pull down this first tank, try to harass with it, and that's when he's going to be in trouble, man. Look at this. Oh, my God. This is looking really, really bad for Hydra. He's having to repair with so many SCVs. It's just spending all of his money right yeah. now. Um, to repair this one bunker, the tank um, coming over here onto the ledge, but that Dragoon can be moved pretty easily. The next wave of Dragoons is, might be, frankly, unstoppable. Um, oh me, my god, Zealots. And this means that the damage is going to be dealt very quickly here to the SCDs. Uh, it, the bunker could be taken out. The barracks landed in a position to stop the Dragoons wow. from getting in as easily, but the bunker is going to be in bunker heaven or hell. Uh, this is... Actually, this is unbelievable. Unbelievable moment here. Uh, what an epic final uh, match here. Hydra has to hang on. He's supposed to be the one who's going to win. He's supposed to be the one who's been in a Korea this whole time and therefore is more experienced and can handle any situation, training all day with pro gamers. Uh, Noni uh, coming back from the dead, emerging from the middle of the wrestling oh. mat like it's a WWF match here. A bunch of goons exploding there. The SCV is coming up. If he can kill every single Dragoon here, he may be able to recover over time. But it is not looking good. He's going to lose this siege tank. More zealots coming. That is not what Hydra wants to see. And right now, Hydra's ears are red, man. He cannot be happy with this. This is a hard position to be in. This is um, a disaster right now for Eider, but at the same time, actually, a lot of those units were driven out. I thought he was going to do more damage. He might have wanted to back up for a minute, but it can be a tough call. These two zealots try to move over here, but take a look here. As these SCVs get in the way, the uh, tanks staying into unsiege mode, pushing out a lot of these uh, zealots, but frankly, there might just be too many zealots. He can now switch back to the Dragoon tech and uh, just march in there. It's all up to my crow. It's all down to this moment. He has to pull this off. Look at this, two vultures making for Hydra, very, very smart play. Microing those siege tanks like his life depends on it, and well, it almost does. He really needs to eliminate these zealots. But a Dragoon in, and this is huge. The Dragoon is going to deal so much more damage to those tanks. Here come the vultures, losing a vulture right there. That is huge for Noni to kill that vulture. And another vulture going down. Hydra falling apart right now. I am getting heat chills, man. This is crazy, crazy game. Oh, my God, I can't believe and, this. Oh, I my can't God. Believe this. This, is, this is un. Freaking real. Uh, is this game is dead. over. Noni back from the dead. And the undead toss here. He's won a GG. What a goddamn amazing game. This is unfathomable. I uh, can't believe Idra this. I could not be happy with that. And I have good news for you folks out there. We have an interview right now live on the air with Noni himself. Let's go to that right now. Do we have any more things to wrap up with this? Well, hold on. Let's uh, let's go to that uh, interview pretty quick here. I just want to say, uh, amazing, amazing series. And uh, well, one second, Looks and like we'll get Noni on. Prop us up. Hello, Noni. Uh, one second here. Right, Noni, are you there? I am here. Hello, hello. Hello? Uh, can you hear me? Just one second here, looking for Noni.
Hello, Noni, are you there? I am here, what is up, Artosis? Well, I am up, and uh, you are up to the round of four. How does that feel, first off? Oh, it feels great. I just, uh, it was a huge hurdle, and I'm past it now, so really relieved. I, I, I tell you, I, we gotta we gotta go over some of these games, okay? Um, first off, I want to go over game number two. Uh, I'm a little <laughs> bit dyslexic, so we're gonna start there. Um, game number two, man. How'd you feel about that win, seriously, when he canceled his command center? Uh, well, at first I didn't figure out what was going on. <laughs> I think pretty much just like everyone else it was just like what happened and then uh, mm. I realized that you know he misclicked and hit escape on the on the building rather than on the unit and uh, Ed I thought about it for a second and I was just like you know he could have stayed in and fought for it but with a build like that um, it's gonna be really hard to uh, mm. you can't you can't make you can't make much of a mistake in a build like that I mean even if you build a depot late when you're fast expanding it might it might lose you the game and to cancel the cc well that's a lot worse than the late depot so i think he was pretty screwed yeah he he definitely was uh maybe smart of him not to go on super duper tilt by you know just losing to ranged goons or something there um at any point in time did you think that maybe your probe had just killed the uh the command center with a critical hit <laughs> no that did not cross my mind oh okay um, well, <laughs> let's let's look at the destination game real quick here. Um, you really, it seemed to me that you moved in too quickly with those first two zealots, and you just were like so gung ho. Uh, and I really thought you were gonna go for like some sort of brilliant speed zealot after making him make turrets, which don't help against speed zealots. Some sort of attack like that. Um, did you regret moving in so quickly and not maybe thinking of what Artosis thought of? Yeah, um, I actually hadn't planned to do that strategy. It was a bit improvised. I planned to just do the the one gate proxy, do a little harass, and then take it into the late game. But then I felt like I could probably finish it right there if uh, if I did the more proxy gates. And uh, I think I definitely could have, and I think most people could see that it could have worked, but I messed up the execution. And I think uh, it's probably just due to the fact I didn't practice it at all, and so mm. when I'm on the spot right there and improvising with a build I, I haven't done before, I'm just not able to do it perfectly. And so yeah, it was a bit messed up. Your your idea with the speed zealots would have would have been much better. All right. Well, uh, you know, game one now. Let's go back to that for some reason. Um, he did a vulture drop off two factories. This is something that probably no one has ever seen Hydra do. Did he really super catch you off guard? And did it tilt you losing on that map, which is really favored for Protoss, especially since we saw you beat him there when you had only played for a week? Yeah, well, my thinking going into the game was I have this DT drop that I can do that uh, it's going to land about seven minutes into the game and looking back to our first series he he still had an academy building and it, his ebay wasn't done either at seven minutes in the game so i thought you know if he does the same build this build this dt drops just gonna kill him so i think it's looking pretty good and then we got in the game and it was vertical positions and i'm thinking you know he almost beat me on andromeda anyway and in vertical positions he probably definitely could have beaten me and so maybe he's he's just going to play it safe and do exactly what I thought. And uh, when the dropship came in, I pretty much realized he's just he's just completely countered my DT drop, and uh, there wasn't much I could do at that point. Mm -hmm. Now uh, this this last game that we just saw here, uh, what do you want to say about this? You proxy three gateways, stop probes at like I don't even know what did you stop probes at twenty five and. You just kind of barreled him over there. Uh, what do you have to say about that build? Where'd you come up with that? Yeah, well, my plan for this series was actually to take Tornado, Destination, and Fighting Spirit into the late game, into the mid-late game. I focus a lot on uh, stopping mid-game harass and just building up an advantage for the late game and knowing how to finish off a Terran opponent late into the game. and. <laughs> I never actually got to do any of that, and so going into Fighting Spirit, I thought 
crazy stuff has happened in this series so far, but it's 2-2, Fighting Spirit, pretty standard map. We're going to see the classic game that everyone wanted to see. And then he does that build, and in my practice games, uh, whenever I saw a Terran do that build, it just occurred to me, what can they do against Proxy Gates? And uh, every time I did Proxy Gates against this uh, FE Terran build, the Terran pretty much couldn't do anything. Uh, they don't, really don't have many options. As you can see, the, the goons start firing away on the bunker, SCVs have to repair, more goons come, more SCVs have to repair. There's just no money for the, for the Terran and uh, zealots are gonna kill SCVs so when they bring a bunch of SCVs to help with the micro uh, it's not like uh, I just have goons in which case the SCVs would be great I have the zealots mixed in too and uh, I don't think I ever lost a game against an A- minus or higher Terran that did that build where I did the proxy gates so I was pretty confident that it was gonna work and in fact thinking back to the tornado game when he was going to do the FE uh, the same way, I thought it was fortunate that I didn't have to do the proxy gates then because he would have seen what my counter is to that FE build that, that mm. he did in the fifth game. And so I, I got to do the counter in the fifth game and it worked. And I don't know if it would have worked only one time or if it would have worked twice anyway, but it was, it was good that it, I got to save that for the last game when it mattered the most. Indeed it did. Um... Now, you didn't play for about a year. Um, how so good, yo? Why so good? How so handsome? <laughs> I don't know, you know. iCup is an incredible resource, and uh, it's just really fortunate that I can just log on and play Pro Gamer's low latency whenever I need to. And I've always been a mechanical player, so my mechanics came back to me pretty naturally and I just had to catch up on a few of the latest trends and uh, just start working on some builds that'll work and that's all it takes. Took me about a month. Alright, wow. Um, well, let's talk about some of the other TSL matches that we've seen. Uh, first off, Rhett got knocked out. He may have been, you know, your hardest opponent. His ZVP is kind of legendary nowadays. Uh, and now we have Sen against Mondragon on the other side of the bracket, which both of them, by the way, are very well known for their Zerg versus Protoss. Uh, which one of those would you less like to see in the finals? Um, I think I have a better chance against Sen, actually. I'm gonna, I've always respected Mondragon, his play a ton, and uh, especially his ZVP, of course. And uh, I think he's a very clever player, and I feel like Sen is a more mechanical player, and I'll know what I'm getting into if I have to play against Sen, and I just need to uh, play my game and, and outplay him. But with Mondragon, I feel like Mondragon's the kind of guy that might outsmart me, and it might get a little iffy. And so going into a best of seven, I just like a straight up slugfest with a guy like Sen rather than a guy like Mondragon who, who's very clever and has the mechanics too to, to do a slugfest, but he might have some, some tricks up his sleeve. Mm -hmm. Mondragon the Magician Zerg. Uh, well, we just saw JF against White Rod. Did you watch that match in intense anticipation? Yeah, I was watching it. It was, it was a fun match. It was a fun match, wasn't it? Um, well, JF, he is your next opponent. And JF, uh, pretty good PvP, man. I have to say, his Reavers are pretty scary. What do you think about having to go up against him in the next round? Uh, well, it's amazing that he's made it to the top four, because I still think he's operating on very limited practice. Mm. And, uh, you know, without being condescending or whatever, I think we could all see... His play is a little bit choppy, a little bit sloppy here and there, and it's not the uh, amazingly solid JF that we're used to. And so, as long as he can go for another week without doing a ton of practice, I, I'm feeling pretty good going against him. I don't feel like I'm facing 100% in shape JF, even though he's managed to take out two great players in Ghosty Terran and White Raw. Uh, I still feel pretty good about it. Excellent. Well. Are you going to win 
the TSL. That is that is my last question for you. Are you the champion already? I'm already the champion. I'm already the champion. Oh, I'm wow. so eager. I'm so eager to show my PVZ in the finals, <laughs> and uh, I feel really good about playing JF next week. Unless he's just a wizard that's gonna double up his skill in about a week, and uh, yeah, TSL champion, right here. Wow, you heard it here, folks. TSL champion Noni. His <laughs> predictions so far going pretty well. Um, well, thank you very much, Noni. Anything to say to your fans? And by the way, Tesla says hi. Uh, thanks for supporting me, especially Mr. Rec Rule and Mr. Zephyr, aka Poor User. <laughs> I like <laughs> I like your form of support, especially. <laughs> and uh, yeah, I hope now that uh, the great America, the other great American player is out of the way, uh, we can all stand behind Noni as he becomes TSL champion. Unite as one. It's like McCain versus Obama. <laughs> yeah. and it is time, folks. We gotta stand behind Noni yeah. and watch him yeah. take on uh, the Canadian JF. Oh, and I got I gotta say thanks to Team Liquid, thanks to PokerStrategy.com. Uh, they don't get enough thanks. This whole thing wouldn't be happening without them. It's an amazing yes. event. So thank you guys. All right. Well, uh, thank you very much for the interview, and good luck in the next round. Hopefully, I'll be talking to you like this again next week. Thank you very much. All right, so uh, that just about wraps up the TSL for this week. We are going to go ahead and see next week Noni against Jeff, as you saw, and also Mondragon against Sen. Two amazing matches. I'm quite excited to see them. So, uh, yeah, that's just about it. Thank you very much for watching. Thank you so much again to PokerStrategy.com, our sponsor here for the Team Liquid Star League. And thank you to the viewers for watching. Bye-bye.